If you've spent any time on the internet, you've most likely seen athletes performing these crazy pull-up sets where they do upwards of 50 or even 100 reps without leaving the bar. Like many passionate gym bros and calisthenics athletes before me, I too wanted to learn the secrets of infinite pulling endurance. There was only one big problem, finding an effective training method among the countless YouTube videos and Reddit pages. However, not finding this method meant never hitting that golden 20 rep mark, and so I had no choice but to get to work. And eventually, after lots of testing and experimentation, I came across an approach that has led me to 30 reps and even more. King in the castle, king in the castle. I'm by no means saying this is super impressive or that I'm an endurance expert. In fact, I mostly train for strength and some sports. What I'm about to share with you has helped me increase my pulling endurance, and so why shouldn't it work for you too? If you truly want to skyrocket your progress, click the top link in the description down below and join our brotherhood of passionate athletes that all want to take their strength to new levels and unlock awesome skills as well. In the community, we have live calls, courses, monthly challenges and more, so join now whilst we still have the chance. Click the top link in the description down below and I'll see you inside. Cheers. Alright guys, the key to pulling endurance, the tool that I use in order to increase my bodyweight pull-up reps, was simply one arm hangs. Now, what do I mean by this? Because a few of you might be a bit confused. Well, when you get tired enough in your lats and in your forearms, to the point where you can no longer do proper pull-ups during your pull-up sets, you want to alternate between dangling from your left and right arm whilst shaking out your non-working arm. And you might say, why? Well, this sounds a bit strange, right? Well, as you perform the one arm hangs, your non-working arm gets time to rest and recover, which is why these are often called one arm hanging rests. Now, after a few seconds of hanging on each arm, you can usually squeeze out an additional one, two, or even three reps, or even more if you're really, really advanced, right? So you want to cycle through these hangs and crank out sporadic reps until you can no longer do them anymore. So this is an example of me performing some one arm hangs right here. So I'm performing a pull up and I feel that this is the last pull up I could properly do. I don't have the power to do any more, right? So I go into some one arm hangs, dangle from one arm at a time whilst shaking out the other so I can remove as much lactic acid as possible. Sometimes you might need to do one hang per arm, other times maybe two or even three as you get into later stages of this. But as you do so, you'll be able to get out that lactic acid, you'll be able to freshen up to the point where you can squeeze out a few more reps. And some of you might say, is it really just that simple? And as with most things, well, yeah and no, right? So firstly, why is this a good strategy? Well, what you will learn to do after a while of training max pull-ups with one arm hanging rest is to ignore the voice in your head telling you that you're done. Right? You'll realize that if you only push yourself, you can go much further than you thought you could. You'll be able to shatter your perception of limits. And this relates to the 40% rule, which goes as follows. When your mind is telling you that you're done, that you're exhausted, that you cannot possibly go any further, you're actually only 40% done. And this was formulated by Mr. David Goggins. But I still hear some of you guys saying, but, but what if I want to improve my pull-ups without hanging rest, right? And this is where we want to be aware of our goals. So first and foremost, I will say that using one-arm hangs to build hang time and squeeze out more reps in a tired state will be advantageous regardless of the rules you later on impose to sort of your pull-up goal, right? Also, the more you train with one-arm hanging rest, the better you'll get at one-arm hangs, which in turn will improve your overall hanging endurance. And the way I see it, the better your hanging endurance, the better your baseline for more advanced forms of endurance, like pulling endurance later on. But we want to keep in mind the said principle, right? Which is specific adaptations to imposed demands. And what I mean by this is that if you're training for a super specific type of endurance, the best way to improve that endurance is to train that exact thing. So here, here is an example of me performing bodyweight pull-ups where there's no hanging rest and I have two points of contact with the bar at all times, right? If this is your goal, to improve your max bodyweight pull-up sets where you can, no, where you can no, use no one-arm hanging rest, the best way to do so would be to do max bodyweight pull-up sets where you do no one-arm hanging rest, right? So specificity is important. This is like if you're training to be a biker, right? The best way to improve your biking endurance is to do biking, right? As opposed to doing running, for example. However, it's also worth keeping in mind that if you do other things in addition to biking, that might make for an even better program. But still, at its core, right, if your only goal is to become better at a particular type of biking in a particular setting with particular rules, the best way to become better at that thing 
is to do that thing, right? So that's worth keeping in mind. But of course, there are other strategies as well, right? I mean, one arm hangs are one of the most effective tools that I've used, and I really enjoy them, right? And as we just talked about, specificity is always an important thing to keep in mind. But you've got other strategies too. And if you want me to make similar videos to this right here, leave a comment down below stating that you'd like to see more endurance stuff. But in order to give you guys an idea of what other strategies lie out there when it comes to endurance, you could, for example, build endurance through building strength. And this is quite fascinating because the stronger you get, for example, at pull-ups, if you take your weighted pull-up from, from 20 kilos to 60 kilos or whatever have you, right, if you get stronger in your weighted pull-ups, each individual pull-up at body weight will be, relatively speaking, easier, right? And this way, you'll be able to do more of these body weight pull-ups per set, thus having greater endurance from having greater strength. So if you guys are interested in a way to build more strength with your pull-ups, you can check out this video for the complete system that I use to get to roughly 2x body weight pull-up. And also, don't forget to join the free community, top link in the description down below. So see you guys later.